Hello guys, welcome to Sunset Film Alliance. Today we're going to compare the dynamic range of the different creative styles on Panasonic S5. This will also apply to the S5 II and the S5 IIx, which are coming out soon. So let's take a look. So this is standard. In standard, as you can see, the sky is probably clipping below, uh, behind me. And um, I'm probably in pretty deep shadow. I set the exposure before I walk into the frame, so if I'm underexposed, that is why. I don't want to overexpose and guess because then it would create inaccurate tests because different profiles overexpose a bit differently. So let's move on to the next profile and see how it does. Alright guys, so this is Vivid. It should have a bit less dynamic range. In fact, I'm sure it has the least dynamic range out of all the profiles. And so I'll be darker and the sky will be brighter and colors will be more vivid as well the profile states. So take a look at Vivid, take a look at the sky up there, take a look at me, take a look at the grass down here, and just go back in the video and compare it to standard. Alright guys, so this one is natural. Natural has a bit more dynamic range, just slightly so. You can see slightly more into the shadows, slightly more into the highlights, the cloud is about to cover the sun, so lighting's about to change. But basically it has slightly more dynamic range and slightly uh, less saturation. Alright guys, so this is L Classic Neo. It's meant to look like an old film profile, but I just think it kind of sucks, so I never use it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should have more muted highlights, but also soft clipped, meaning it looks like a soft white instead of clipping, which is interesting. And then the shadows does some weird bump to the shadow, so you might be able to see me better but it also tends to clip the blacks a little bit, so it just looks bad overall, in my opinion. The grass looks a bit bluish green, it's weird. So yeah, next one. Alright, so this is flat. It's one of the flattest profiles in all of the profiles, hence the name flat. So basically, I would call this the flattest of the standard profiles, allowing the most dynamic range in a standard profile before going to Cine-like, or log or HLG and basically this lets you play with the image a little bit more though it doesn't give you as much dynamic range as you might want though it does do it without a color shift that some of those cine profiles tend to do so this is landscape I don't know why you'd film a video in this it really crushes the shadows it adds a lot of saturation to blue and green as you see here and overall it's like vivid but with more blue and green enough said so this is portrait. Should have made my skin tones look better, and that's about it. It messes with the skin tones a little bit, but otherwise it's not too far off from neutral. So basically, you get what you get. Still lower dynamic range like all the other profiles. And yeah, so this is monochrome. Monochrome is interesting. It's sort of like standard, but black and white. So you get the same sort of dynamic range as standard, but you get it in, well, black and white. L Monochrome is similar, but different. It really crushes the shadows, and that's about it. So imagine Vivid, but in Monochrome. That's what L Monochrome is. And yeah, so crushes the shadows, leaves the highlights sort of intact, but overall it goes for a sort of grainy black and white aesthetic. L Monochrome D adds even more contrast to the already contrast D L Monochrome. So basically, <laughs> you get a very high contrast monochrome going for even a grittier look. I personally prefer this one to L monochrome because it gives you a nice high contrast instead of just sort of a muted dark image. So this one's L monochrome S. Now I took the ability of just taking the contrast and shoving it to minus five because I'm going to color grade this one. Well not really color grade, just adjust the tone right now. Basically I find this one as the best black and white profile to shoot in if you want to edit it later and change the look of the black and white because it gives you the flattest image and you can really push it even flatter if you're using 10-bit color. And it's funny using 10-bit color for black and white but it still gives you the high gradation that you can use without the stair stepping and banding in the skies and the shadows. Now we start getting into the really flat profiles. This is Cinelike D2 and the only tweaks I've made to this one is turning down noise reduction and sharpness to minus 5 because I like doing that in post. Now basically, as you can see, you can see much more of the sky, much more of the shadows, and much more of me in the front, even though I exposed for the shot before I stepped in. So, this allows you to play with the shot a lot more, even if 
there's higher dynamic range that you can't account for with lights or reflectors. And basically I find this as my favorite one to color grade when I don't have enough time to color grade log footage or use ND filters because of the lower ISO of 200 that it uses compared to V-Log, as well as the better overall rendition it gives compared to the standard profiles. Alright, this is Cinelike V2, basically a more vivid version of Cinelike D2 if you don't want to do the color grading. I found this as my favorite one for non-color grading videos. In fact, I use it for my pro video uh, preset where basically I have it in aperture priority. It's beginning to rain, but it, that doesn't matter because this camera's weather sealed. Um, practically, I like using this one and it's my favorite look for when I don't want to color grade. All right, this is like 709. Basically, it's Rec 709. Whoops, my <laughs> Basically, it's like Rec 709, um, but on a Panasonic camera. And if you want the most accurate color with straight out of the camera without, you know, um, color grading it at all, then this is the profile to choose. And basically, that's it. Um, it's very simple. It has a knee function, which lets it um, adjust the sort of clipping point of the highlights to try to get more dynamic range, but I find it still gets less dynamic range than Cinelite D or Cinelite V, which is why I prefer the other two. All right, and this is V-Log. So now you can see all of me, you can see all the background, you can see all the shadows and all the highlights. Basically, it's perfect for when you are recording outdoors and in high contrast situations without, of course, reflectors or lighting. Although it's good to light and use reflectors, although I'm more of a running gun filmmaker myself, so I like using V-Log and pushing it later in post. And this is the profile with the most dynamic range of the entire camera. So this is an interesting one. This is HLG. Basically it has almost as much dynamic range as V-Log, a bit less, but it does have a lot of dynamic range and it's easier to color grade. You just have to switch Rec 2020 to Rec 709 in your editor, which is not automatic, so you have to find a LUT for it, or use the um, color space transform I have found on DaVinci Resolve. So basically you can just grade it like so, and that's how it works. And yeah, 